Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at a small two player card game from Button Shy called Skulls of Sedlek. Every game Button Shy makes comes in one of these little wallets. They're just 18 cards or so, and uh, they are usually, you know, little small sort of feeling games, usually very quick things. This one's no different. It's for two or three players, and in it, uh, it's a, it has a period theme. You are stacking skulls, for some reason, and scoring based on where they are within the geometry of that stack you are making. So, a little bit of a morbid theme. But the gameplay is quick and tactical. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. I'm going to show you a two-player game, but three is very similar. And then I'll tell you what I think on the other side. So instead of the game, we're going to shuffle all 18 cards. We're going to make six piles like this of three cards each, and we'll flip over one of them, any one of them. And then you are ready to begin. So on your turn, you're going to do one of three things. You can dig, you can collect, or you can stack. To dig, you are going to flip over two cards, the top two cards on any of these piles, and then you'll take one of those two into your hand. To collect, you're simply going to take one for, that's already face up into your hand. And you have a hand limit of two. So if you cannot add a card to your hand, then you, you can't do one of those. And then the final one is stack, which is what the players are trying to do. You're trying to build up a pyramid in front of you. So for a two-player game, there's a four across the bottom, then three above that, then two above that, and you're going to be scoring for positional things among those cards, okay? So, uh, once the game is over, you score for all that, and you see who the winner is. That's all there is to it. So, for example, on my turn, I might flip over two, and then maybe take one and add it to my hand. Then my opponent might just take this one and add it to their hand. Then it comes back to me, maybe I will uh, take this one and add it to my hand. I have two cards now, so I'll be playing one on my turn. My opponent might simply just play this one out, and you don't have to define where across the bottom it is. Then I'll play one on my turn. I'll play one out like this, at the bottom of my pyramid, okay? Then uh, my opponent's going to reveal two, and they will take one. Maybe they'll take that into their hand. Comes back around to me, I can play this one. I can play it here, or I can play it here. And eventually, I can then keep playing here or here or put one above them like so. So the final thing is going to look something like this. They'll have that, then three above it, like this, and then two above that, like this. And then you'll score for each of these different things, okay? So let's go ahead and go through them and let me explain how the scoring works. So we've got the Royals, which are these right here, and they tell you what they do. It says one point per Royal slash Peasant below. So you check where it is, and every line below, and we're assuming this is line one, this is line two, three, four, five, and six. So every Peasant or Royal below this one is going to give you a victory point, fine. So below that one, we've got None here, none here. There is uh, uh, one, two, three there. So I'll get three points for that. I think I'm doing that, right? Okay. Next up, we've got the peasants themselves. Doesn't matter where they are, they give you one point apiece. One, two, three, four. Then we've got priests. And the priests want to be spread out as much as possible. So for every line that has at least one priest, you're going to get two points. So two, four, six, eight. These two are redundant there. They don't, you don't get four points for that, you just get two points for that. Then we look at the romantics, and they want to be paired, they want to be connected. You're gonna get three points for each if they are paired. So I'm getting six points here. This isn't next to any other, and they have to be side to side. And this isn't next to any others. If they were like this, this would also count. These two are connected, okay? And then lastly, for the criminals. These are the criminals, and they want to be next to a priest. So if they're next to a priest, you're going to get two points for that. If not, nothing. So this one's getting me nothing. It's not next to a priest. But I'll get two points for this one. I'll get two points for this one. And I'll get two points for this one. You add all that up, you see who's got the most points, and that player is the winner of the game.
All right, so what do I think of the game? Well, I've played a few of these games, some of the more popular ones from the company. I've played uh, Tussie Mussy and Sprawlopolis, a couple of other ones, and I've enjoyed them. Well, we can add this one to that list for me because I really like this one too, and there's some neat stuff it does, especially in a very truncated timetable. This is a quick, quick game. So let me talk about it, okay? Starting from the top, the theme. It's pretty morbid, but it's clever, and it's kind of an excuse, again, to have a geometric shape on the table that you can then use towards scoring. But I like it. They found a way to have for it to have a mysterious theme in which, in the afterlife, criminals want their skulls buried next to priests to seek redemption and things like that. Lovers want to be together. Uh, so, again, morbid, but it works. The aesthetics are great. Very clean graphic design. Car quality here is superb, and uh, the whole gimmick of this being a small wallet game that you can put in literally a pocket, I like that too. So uh, it, it, gets a, it gets a thumbs up there from me. The, the text on the cards is a little reminder of how they score. That's clear and works well. Good rule book, no questions at all. I like it. Uh, replay value. It, you you can't do everything when you play. You're not going to be able to score off of everything. And even if you do score some points from everything, you're not going to be getting a bunch of points from everything. So the replayability is high. Because you'll end up with different cards. You'll try different things. But the main thing with the replay value is that the game is so incredibly quick. The rule book lists 20 minutes. I would say that's high. I would say that's actually... They're, they're shooting on the high end of how long this game should take you to play. You can knock this out in 10 minutes. And the return you get for those 10 minutes is excellent. There is, again, the, the, the ratio of time investment to interest in this game is possibly one of the highest I've ever seen in any card game. So I really like that. The game arc. Very nice. The fact that you are doing one of three very simple actions. You have a small hand limit. You can only have two. So you can't just sort of hold on and find the perfect combination every time. Sometimes you just have to play something out. Uh, you have to give up on some plans you were maybe hoping. You're digging for specific uh, you know, skulls in specific locations. It really works. Ease of play. Very quick and easy and simple. Like I said, the rule book is, is wonderful, so it, it just makes sense. And at the end, you go through the different categories, write down some points, and you are good to go. So high replay, uh, ease of play. And then lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. Like I said, you can't do everything, but I enjoy trying, and that's kind of what makes it fun. Is there luck? Yeah, there's some luck. You're revealing the cards as you go. You do reveal two, if that's what you're doing. And then you have to take one of those two. But there's something you can do with those that's going to give you some points. Maybe not what you wanted. Maybe not everything you were trying to do. But you have to just sort of steer what you're getting and what you're drafting to the best possible conclusion you can. So I enjoy that. When you play with three players, by the way, you are simply building a smaller pyramid uh, instead of the one I showed you for two players. So if you're building one with three and it's right here in the rule book. Then you build one that has three across the bottom, two above that, one above that. And you'll score off of that uh, configuration. But same thing. You go around, take an action until the cards are gone. So there you go. Like I said, I've been lately especially really surprised with these little games. I know they're, the company makes a bunch of them, and I know I'm not, not going to like them all. I'm sure they're you know, not, sim not all of them are the same caliber. But this one, this is a winner for me. So I recommend it. And uh, as a fun little two or three player game that you can bust out quickly, and this absolutely is one of those before dinner games, if you have the space anyway, this is going to get a strong 8 out of 10 from me. So check this one out, add it to your, uh, you know, add it to your card, I guess, and uh, give it a go. Throw it in your pocket, take it with you. It fills that niche very well. So Skulls of Sedlek, 8 out of 10 from me. That's it, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.